Hello again. In the first four videos, we have explored the use of the stacking technique to make feathered scarfs. In all cases, we dealt with materials of rectangular cross sections. The question can be asked as to whether this technique works for boards of other cross sections. The simple answer is sometimes. It is, of course, possible to scarf together boards of any random cross sectional shape. To prove this to yourself, think of a board with a strange cross section. Saw it in two with a low angle and glue it back together. Voila, you've created a feathered scarf. For a cross-sectional shape to qualify for the stacking technique, at a bare minimum, it must have first two sides, that is, faces that are wide enough to act as a stable contact surface with our table and with themselves. And second, these faces must be at least reasonably close to parallel to one another. Here's an example. Let's cut a scarf on this board. First we choose a slope, say 8 to 1, and measure back from the board end the appropriate distance. At this location we construct a strike line with a strike angle of 0, that is perpendicular to the board's sides. Then plane a scarf face, making sure that the strike line is parallel with the actual scarf strike. You will notice that the scarf feather will not be parallel with the strike, and that the final slope may be steeper than expected. If the slope is steeper than desired, draw a new strike line further from the end and repeat the cutting and sanding. As an experiment, let's flip the board over and cut a scarf with a strike line on this side and see if there is a difference in the shape of the scarf face. The strike and the feather are still not parallel, but they are closer than the previous case. As a general rule then, choose the widest face on the board to contain the strike of the scarf. That way the feather will be better behaved. We'll use this board for the lower scarf in our stack, but before we cut the, st the uh, scarf in the top board, let's jump ahead to the desired final sanded scarf surfaces to see what this final surface in the stack position looks like. Here's our combined scarf base. First, let's look at it from the side. We see one continuous flat surface. Now from the end. We see none of our guidelines seem square to the world or even with themselves. The top view makes more sense. As we had laid it out, we see the strike of the bottom board is perpendicular to the board sides and that the feather on the top board is, being in contact with the latter, also perpendicular to the sides. The feather of the bottom board and the strike of the top board, though, show no useful relationships. This arrangement is definitely different than the relationships of the scarf edges on rectilinear boards where all feathers and all strikes were respectively parallel. This creates a complication when we rough cut the scarf surface on the top board. The strike of the top board is at some unknown angle to the sides and therefore of little use. Instead, we will plane the scarf surface so that the finished feather is perpendicular to the edges and let the strike seek its own position. We will see the practical implications of this later. We also see that the shape of the two scarves are not identical, but rather are mirror images of one another. We did not notice this in the rectilinear boards because the mirror image of a rectangle is identical to itself. But as this more general case shows, a mirror image is what is actually required. We can see this as we rotate the two surfaces into juxtaposition. Now let's go out in the shop and lay out and cut a similar scarf. Here's a good shape for our example. It mimics the shape of the uh, stock I used to make the in-wall spacers. Our board's about half inch thick and say we use a 10 to 1 slope, that means it'll be about 5 inches, say something like that for our length of our scarf. And we'll find that the widest space is this one. So we'll put a, a tentative strike line in right there. And now we'll clamp this and rough cut this surface. I've clamped our board in place and I've put a spacer underneath it so that I can extend the end past our 2x6 so I don't uh, damage the end of the 2x6 in the process of planing. 
in the rough shaping I like to like to try to establish a straight line from the strike down to the tip to establish that end of the feather once I've got that close then I uh, bring the face of the scarf around so that the strike of the face starts to line up with my strike line there now you can start to see that the feather is starting to come in at an angle here it's close enough for the rough now we're ready to rough scarf the uh, top board so we'll find the wide side that's this one and we're going to leave it down against our 2x6 and scarf the opposite side we're going to bring it down until the surface creates a feather at right angles to the uh, board, or in other words, right even with the end of the 2x6. We can see that we're starting to get close here on the feather and our strike is running about like that so I put the bottom board back in place with the protector stiffener underneath it and then I placed the top board and lined up the feather with the strike line and uh, because these surfaces are not level I've had to go ahead and drill and screw some screws in to hold this steady uh, this is especially the case if these two sides of your uh, boards are at a larger angle now I'll go ahead and sand this to the finished scarf face my goal will be to keep this feather and that scarf line at 90 degrees to the sides we'll let the feather on the lower board and the strike in the upper board go where they will every once in a while I'll check my work to make sure it's flat and I can use a good quality piece of plywood to do that especially on larger faces my feather stayed pretty close to right angles and this lower feather is running about there the other one is somewhere near so let's take it apart and dry fit it to review again the final scarf face should be controlled by just two things the strike on the lower board which matches the feather on the upper board and the flatness of the surface unlike when we had rectilinear 
scarves. We had the feathers on both ends and the uh, strike line on the upper board and that would help us keep the, the surfaces flat. In this case we can't do that. We'll have to measure the flatness of the, the faces with something that's quite accurate like a board. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate this over and do a dry fit. Pretty good. Now when we go to gluing, we want to put the wider surface down on our gluing table because it makes a more stable uh, situation for gluing and clamping. And of course, proceed as before, lining things up, clamping the lower board first, putting in your witness lines, etc. That pretty much does it for these series. I hope these techniques help you out in your boat building projects. See you later.